the 29th Surfers Navy Association National Symposium started today in Crystal City, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. The event gathers the naval defense industry and top Navy officials to discuss the future of the surface fleet. SNA 2017 focuses this year on distributed lethality and sea control. Huntington Ingalls Industries unveiled today, for the very first time, a scale model of the DDG-51 Flight 3. Good morning, Perry. What can you tell us about this uh, new model? So this is our uh, DDG-51 Flight 3. This is the first time we've displayed it here at Service Navy. Um, it's incorporating uh, several features um, that are new to the Flight 3. That includes the AMDR radar, the SPY-6. Uh, we've also um, changed some configuration of the, uh, the ribs on the side, added some uh, habitability up top side, and uh, increase the stern uh, for uh, added safety displacement. Um, all these are design features the Navy are currently working on uh, that we believe are, are going to be incorporated into the Flight 3. The rest of the changes are primarily below deck. The Navy is going to increase the electrical distribution system. They're going from a 440 system to a 4160 to give more power and more energy for the new radar and the future systems. The other thing is they have also increased the type of cooling system on there to give it a higher efficiency. So they're going from uh, 200 ton plants to 300 tons. So uh, most of the changes are inside from the profile. It's very, very similar to the DDG Flight 2As. Uh, so there's just some subtle differences, but uh, the platform is going to be more capable, able to do integrated air and missile defense. Uh, so it's going to be, for the future, this will be a, uh, the most capable uh, DDG-51 class ship out there in the fleet. Good afternoon, Gary. What are you uh, representing here? Here in the Konigsberg booth, uh, what we're representing initially is uh, operationalizing distributed lethality, which is the theme of SNA this year in order to enable sea control. So what we've got is a depiction which is uh, not to be represented as actual, accurate, but our depiction of where NSM could be located in the LCS class ships of both types, LCS 1 and 2 class ships, and eventually the frigate design when that's uh, divulged. I think NSM uh, certainly scratches a lot of itches that have been articulated here at SNA so far today and that we've been reading about for the last several years that talk about an ability to strike at extended ranges with precision and accuracy and most importantly with reliability that the missile that is launched at its target will get to its target, survive any defenses they may have and operationalize distributed lethality throughout the force. And as we talk about throughout the force, uh, we've got some other graphics that show once the initial step is made to uh, rearm or upgun the LCS uh, class ships, then the uh, prospect opens up to go to other ships throughout the force as has been discussed by several speakers today at SNA. The concept of distributed lethality is uh, based on recapitalizing the offensive power of the surface force. Um, very short history, uh, after the Cold War ended, the United States Navy put most of its offensive power in the carrier air wing. And uh, today, right now, there's only about uh, 26 ships in the Pacific Fleet that are capable of firing a surface-to-surface -surface 
missile, and it's a harpoon, which is a you know late 70s generation missile. So uh, at Vice Admiral Roden, who's the current commander of Naval Surface Forces, um, has been, for the last couple of years, he's been publishing a concept called distributed lethality, where you put more offensive weapons on ships that had previously not had that capability. For example, the LCS and the FF, and then um, the LPD-17 ships and the DDG-51s, the Flight 2s, Halls 79 and above, were not fitted with harpoons. So they have no um, classic strike missile, strike missile like a Exocet or harpoon or any of that capability. So um, we've teamed Raytheon Missile Systems. We're, we're the largest missile producer in the world. We've teamed up with Kongsberg uh, because they have a, a fielded, very, very capable fifth generation cruise missile um, that we think could ha has the footprint um, and the proven capability. It's deployed on two classes of Norwegian ships and it's deployed by the Polish Navy to very, very quickly and uh, efficiently meet this demand from the surface Navy to distribute more offensive lethality on, on ships that heretofore had not had it. Well, SM-6 is a long range, uh, originally a long range AW weapon that has uh, developed over the course of time to both do AAW and sea based terminal. And in the uh, December, or sorry, January of 2016, we also demonstrated a third capability of anti-surface warfare. So we have three missions in one missile now uh, that will begin to deliver to the United States Navy. So what we announced today was that the U.S. Navy and the U.S. government has approved sales of SM-6 to international countries. So some of the potential customers are based on Aegis baselines that, that they either have stated they are going to upgrade or have already began to procure those baselines, which are Aegis Baseline 9. Uh, those countries are Korea, Japan, and the country of Australia. So the test that we conducted uh, off the USS John Paul Jones uh, in uh, mid-December uh, of last year was a demonstrating the sea based terminal capability of our SM-6 Dual-1 against a medium range uh, ballistic missile target uh, off the coast of Hawaii. So what makes uh, SM-6 unique and a, and a great missile is that we, we've continued to demonstrate, one, our success, two, our capability to add additional mission sets to the missile. So we're not manufacturing boutique missiles, we're manufacturing a single miss missile with multiple missions embedded in the software. I'm John Perry. I am with the Weapons Systems Organization out of BA Systems. Uh, we are here today uh, displaying and presenting to the customer some of our advanced capabilities in electric weapons. What we have right here is a model of the electromagnetic railgun that we are co-developing with the U.S. Navy to bring the next generation of naval weapon gunfire to the fleet. The main capabilities are you completely remove uh, the propellants from the gun weapon system and you're using pure electrical current to accelerate a projectile to muzzle velocities that you cannot achieve with conventional propellants. You're also improving the safety of the weapon and therefore the ship by removing those energetics from the system. And you're also reducing logistics because you don't have to move the propelling charge through the fleet to the ship and to the weapon.